Paul InfoPerson, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss lightning. One of the most powerful and most dramatic phenomena on planet Earth. But specifically we're going to dive into a recent and rather astounding discovery of the longest lightning bolt ever recorded. A true mega flash that stretched for hundreds of miles and that was only confirmed extremely recently. And well, in this video we're going to explore the science behind all of this, we're going to find out how such events are usually measured, but also discuss why this is important and how all of this connects to our understanding of planet Earth and various activities in space. And so here let's actually jump into that recent discovery right away, but first you might have heard the expression lightning never strikes the same place twice. Well, in reality this is not entirely scientifically accurate. Because lightning can and often does strike the same place multiple times, especially very tall prominent structures. But for our discussion today it's actually important to understand that most lightning does not strike the planet and usually just happens in the clouds themselves. Or just to rephrase this, most lightning is not vertical and it's actually horizontal. And so these immense horizontal discharges can travel for a very long time and in theory can travel across extremely vast distances. Although the only way to determine how far or even to discover these events is to usually observe them from outer space. And here I actually wanted to start with some of the beautiful images taken by various astronauts on the International Space Station that were recently posted online. And while these lightning strikes look nothing like the ones on the planet, and that's because here we're looking at them from the top. But these events or these lightning strikes dwarf in comparison to what happened in 2017 in the United States. During a major thunderstorm in October of 2017, a colossal flash of electricity streaked across the Great Plains of North America for approximately 830 kilometers or 515 miles. That's basically the distance between Texas and Kansas. And that's a truly immense scale for a single lightning strike. Here's roughly how it looked like and how it measured. And this bolt surpassed the previous record by approximately 60 kilometers. And interestingly, the previous record was also in the US. That one was 768 kilometers, detected in Mississippi, Louisiana and Texas. And that's already quite intriguing. Both of these powerful events were in a very similar location in the United States and both happened approximately three years apart, although the longest lightning bolt, even though it happened earlier, was only confirmed extremely recently. And it was recently reported in a study right here you can find in the description. And so here I guess the important question is, why was it just confirmed now and how exactly do we even measure this? Well obviously this is not just as simple as standing with the ruler outside. A lot of these record breaking mega flashes were mostly detected using advanced satellite technology and specifically two satellites known as GOES-16 and GOES-17. These are geostationary weather satellites that provide extremely accurate weather data to most of North America and that you can learn more about in one of the links in the description. And both of these satellites are equipped with an instrument called Geostationary Lightning Mapper or GLM. An instrument that continuously monitors the skies for extreme lightning events, but obviously mostly over regions like Americas and the oceans nearby. Which is of course why all of these record holders right now are only seen in North America. But unlike ground-based systems that usually focus on detecting radio waves, GLM measures the total brightness or the optical energy. And it's able to detect these bows within the clouds, between the clouds or even striking the ground. But the actual process of measuring a mega flash can be quite time consuming. It essentially involves combining the data from the ground with the satellite data and then meticulously reconstructing the extent in three dimensions. In this image you can see some of the individual points with the data coming from various ground detectors. And this is done in order to confirm that this is indeed a single lightning strike and in order to determine its exact dimensions. Which is precisely how this particular strike was confirmed to be a single event and the event of enormous proportions as visualized right here. This is basically covering almost the entire cloud. And this is actually pretty common for very large cloud complexes. If a cloud complex is very large, the horizontal propagation can lead to giant bolts of lightning that we usually classify as mega flashes. And these are usually more than 100 kilometers in length. But here it's no coincidence that both of these events seem to happen over Great Plains in North America. Because likewise, similar record holders have also been detected in a somewhat similar region elsewhere. The region referred to as the La Plata Basin in South America. 
which is actually a region we've discussed before because here there was also an enormous lightning strike a few years back. And both of these regions are known as hotspots for what's known as mesoscale converging systems. These are enormous thunderstorms and usually involving long-lived storm complexes that are especially conductive to creating mega flashes. And so here these turbulent conditions inside these storms jostle subatomic particles around, creating immense electrical charges across the entire cloud that eventually discharge as enormous lightnings. And both of these locations experience a very high frequency of various storms. This is of course because of very similar geographic and atmospheric conditions, with both regions essentially containing several geographic similarities. For example, for the Great Plains, this region lies to the east of the Rocky Mountains, which acts as a kind of a barrier helping funnel air masses. And a lot of warm, moist air from Gulf of Mexico combines with a cooler, drier air from the Rockies, resulting in a major clash that then generates frequent cyclones. And for this region in South America, the Andes act in a very similar way, blocking and channeling atmospheric flow, interacting with the colder air coming from the South Atlantic. And so the west to east mountain barrier, access to abundant equatorial warm and moist air, and intrusions from cold air that mixes and produces cyclones, creates a lot of instability that eventually leads to these mega storms. But the thing is, when it comes to the actual lightning strikes, there is obviously so much we still don't understand. For example, we still are not entirely certain what triggers them. Or to be more exact, how is lightning initiated inside of these clouds and what causes the first spark? And here we do have additional research, especially research on a lot of cosmic rays, that seems to provide at least some explanation. For example, the system known as BIMAP3D, a lightning research system from the Los Alamos National Laboratory, surprisingly connected several cosmic ray showers, or basically these super powerful particles coming from outside of the planet, usually created by supermassive black holes, to some of the major lightning flashes observed on the planet. Or just to rephrase this, some of the cosmic rays potentially create pathways inside the thunderclouds, allowing lightning to follow and travel faster. So the cosmic rays potentially serve as a kind of a catalyst for massive lightning strikes. But I guess what's even more unexpected is that even human-based effects seem to play at least some role. At least several studies have shown that air pollution seems to increase the frequency of lightning strikes during thunderstorms. And so here, fine particles, or aerosols, can act as cloud nuclei, influencing the separation of electrical charges inside the clouds and potentially leading to more lightning production as a result. Which introduces another factor. Human activity also seems to increase lightning strikes in certain locations. And this was also reported in a different study that was actually assessing something else. Due to international regulations in 2020, a lot of shipping nowadays started to produce way, way less sulfur. So basically, all of those shipping containers that we have in the oceans now don't produce as much sulfur as before. And this surprisingly led to a dramatic decrease in the lightning over major shipping lanes. For example, in the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea, the overall lightning dropped by about 40 to 76 percent when the sulfur emissions were cut by 77 percent. And here the overall effect seems to be somewhat similar. This is potentially the result of sulfur acting as a CCN, cloud condensation nuclei. It seems to increase the number of droplets and ice crystals inside the thunderstorm clouds, which enhances clouds' electricity and produces more lightning. And so far, multiple studies confirm that there seems to be no other factor at play here, and the only thing that changed was literally sulfur emissions. And this definitely provides us with clear evidence that human emissions, especially emissions from shipping, were substantially amplifying lightning for the past few decades. Although when it comes to extreme lightning effects, it's actually not just about the longest lightning, it's also about the lightning that seems to last the longest. And here we have at least one record from 2020. This was, not surprisingly, from the same location in South America that produced the longest lasting lightning strike that was approximately 17.1 seconds long. But then we also have super bolts, lightning strikes that are usually much, much brighter than anything else, in some cases up to a thousand times brighter than any previous emissions. Once again, same location as before, La Plata Basin and the Great Plains. But what makes these lightning strikes particularly scary is the power. They can actually produce up to 3 terawatts of power in just a fraction of a second. And technically this will be enough to power 300 million homes in America or the entire state of California for approximately a month. So these are really, really powerful events. 
but they don't just strike the ground, they also do something that goes the other way. Lightning can also interact with Earth's Van Allen belts, and when that happens, it actually rips high-energy killer electrons from the belts themselves and then fires them in all directions at near the speed of light. And these very, very powerful electrons, or killer electrons, technically can be super dangerous. Luckily though, not for anyone on the planet. But in space, they can easily penetrate metal on satellites, they can easily damage electronics, and can even pose danger to astronauts in space. And this has even been captured as a picture from the International Space Station. These blue jets usually create these killer electrons, projecting them into outer space. And so since the space industry in the last few years has really been picking up, with a lot of new startups trying to create even more satellites, this is something we definitely have to understand because a single event like this can easily destroy any satellite that passes above it. But it's really the continuous monitoring using a lot of the other satellites, like the ones I mentioned before, known as GOES-16 and GOES-17, and thorough studies on lightning, like the one from Georgia Tech Research Institute, that can one day help us understand lightning a little bit more, and potentially even help us predict it, or maybe even control it. Right now, all we know is that this is a really complex and poorly understood phenomenon, whose origins are not entirely understood, but that both cosmic rays and humans seem to influence quite a lot. And so with every single new discovery, we sort of peel back another layer of this shocking natural phenomenon, helping us understand it just a little bit more. But at least for now, that's really all I wanted to mention. There's been a lot of discoveries about lightning in the last few years, but we'll discuss some of the other research in the video that's going to be coming out really soon. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and you can DM me directly, or support this channel by joining the channel membership that grants you early access, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.